Uh, let me see. How difficult is it? How difficult is the certification? The CISP is extremely difficult. It was difficult for me. I knew I took, it's a six hour course. I, I don't know if that's your question, but for me, it was difficult. Um, and I had, I had at the time I had 10 years of experience and I, it was difficult for me. I took, it's a six hour course and I took five hours and 50 minutes to finish it. And I had a migraine headache afterwards. I think it's, it's me really. I questioned myself on search on tests and I really am like very critical of myself as I'm taking each and the questions, the answers on the questions of CISP are very difficult, but I know people that walked in, studied two months. And then, and then passed it in 30 minutes. Or is that's what they said anyway. That's why I passed it in 30 minutes. Wow, good for you, man. I, it took me six hours to pass it. And I at the end of it, I, I was absolutely certain that I failed. Is it mostly coding? No. <laughs> it's funny. That's really, that's a funny question. No, it's, there's no coding on the CISSP test. There's no coding. It's all concepts. It's all cybersecurity concepts. If you want to know what kind of concepts they have. Now, there are technical questions, but it's not coding. So that's another misconception. There's two major misconceptions about, I was, there's two major, three, there's three major misconceptions about cybersecurity. One, people think that every cybersecurity person has to know code. They don't. It's a, it, is it better to know code? Absolutely. Python, Perl, C plus HTML as scripting. Yeah, it's absolutely dope. It's incredible if you know coding. Like you are a bad MF if you know coding as a cybersecurity guy. I know a little coding. I'm not super good at it. And but I that being said, nobody's asked me whenever I come in. They're like, hey, Pearl, no, um, not the jobs I want. No. So that's another, that's the misconception. Number one. Number two is that you have to have a security clearance. A lot of people think that to get cybersecurity jobs. You have to have a, a security clearance and no security clearance is a completely different thing from cybersecurity. So a, a security, they shouldn't call it a security clearance. They should just call it a clearance because all they're doing is a background check on you to say, to see if you, you have a certain level of trustworthiness to handle banking information or handle secret information, classified information. They, they're just looking at your background to see if you work for a bank, they want to, they don't want to hire a bank robber. You know what I'm saying? If you work for the government, they don't want to hire somebody who's going to try to overthrow the government. Does that make sense? So it's just a background check. So it's a side, you don't have to have a clearance to, and then there's something called a public trust, but it's actually not a clearance and you don't have to have a, be a U.S. citizen to get it. So it's different. It's just a background check. It's just an intense background check. That's it. And then the third misconception that I get from a lot of people, most of my questions come from this third misconception. And that's if I'm, I work in IT and I'm trying to get into cybersecurity and I don't know how to do it. The misconception is that they've never done cybersecurity before. And what they don't realize is that cybersecurity is not just coding. It's not just hacking. It's a lot. It's this whole umbrella of things, which if I can get to it, I would love to tell you guys about that because that's the biggest part of cybersecurity. I feel like people are really missing the show because it's a huge field. It's not just pen testing. That is 1% of it. That's maybe 1% of it, of everything that goes on in cybersecurity. So maybe three, four, five percent I don't know, but it's not a large percent of cybersecurity. And I would like, love to tell you guys about that.